This week we have some exciting news. A new amazing plugin for mesh warp tracking called Lockdown, previously only available for After Effects, is now available for DaVinci Resolve. This enables us to track surfaces that warp and distort, such as a face or clothing, and have assets realistically move over the surface. Lockdown's a paid add-on, but right now there's a free open beta you can get to try it out. All links will be in the description. In this video, I'll show you a brief overview of using Lockdown to add some digital cuts and bruises. Okay, so to start with, we're going to add the Lockdown plugin. Once that's installed, you'll be able to search and add for that. I'm also going to add a bit of a high pass filter to the footage just to give Lockdown something more to work with. And to do that, I'm going to add a contrast pop node and I'm going to tweak the settings so that we've got more detail so I'm going to like and as you can see as I play with these sliders you get more details of things like pores and, and things coming out on the face and it just gives lockdown something better to grab onto so then selecting lockdown I'm going to click pop out and this will load up the lockdown interface so I'll just briefly explain some of the settings here. Um, we've got lasso grid pixel distance. This will say how dense you want your mesh to be. So the lower the number, the denser the mesh. So I'm gonna go for about 40 here. Um, we've got point radius. This is just how big the points will be displayed. So I'm gonna set that to about 15 so I can see a little better what we're doing. Um, there's two tracking modes. There's accurate, which is, um, as it says, it's pretty accurate, but there's also extremely accurate, which um, sacrifices speed for accuracy. So I'm going to drag along here and I'm going to find a frame where everything is kind of um, undistorted because we want a good frame to start with where there's not much warping going on. So I'm going to go for about here. This is a good place to start. Now holding down control, we can start dragging and it will create like a little lasso. And if we let go, we've got our mesh. And now all we need to do is hit track all. So once it's tracked, we can just scrub through and see how our track's gone. And it's done pretty well. There's a couple of spots though that I'm not entirely happy with. For example, here you can see that the mesh is kind of not tracked extremely well to the to the face so I'm gonna try and fix this I'm gonna do this without editing it so you can see if I run into any problems um, and hopefully I'll be able to quite quickly correct the mistakes here so looking at things here um, that's the start of our mesh and then when the head turns I would say these points should be further over here so what I'm gonna do is zoom into the footage a bit and I'm gonna start dragging these points to where I think they should be. About here, maybe some of these points as well. Just making little adjustments. And each time I do this, it's adding a keyframe for the track. Okay, so that's a little better. And I'm also just down here under interpolate partial tracks, I'm gonna say position, scale and rotate. And this means that if a track doesn't have um, any data for one frame for whatever reason, it will take the data from um, tracks around it and it will sort of smooth out the motion. So I'm going to hit track all again because this will recalculate the data. Um, the red bar here is um, anything between the red is things that will be recalculated when we hit track all. So I'm going to hit track all and I'm going to see what result we get. Now that's done its refinement, we can scrub through and just see what we've got. And yeah, that's looking much better now. You can see that's following the face more. Now, if I was being really fussy, I could probably go in here and move these points around some more, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm happy with that result. So now we're actually finished with the lockdown interface itself. So I'm gonna just close this up. And now you can see that our track points are there in Fusion. We can actually disable the contrast pop because we don't need it anymore. So we've just got our original footage again. Now clicking lockdown, I'm gonna set the mode to graphics comp. And you'll see that it just renders the mesh. 
Now we want to take our, our media and we want to merge this image here over our original footage. So I'm going to drag that into our the end of our media and we'll get a merge node. And if we view that on the keyboard, on the screen even. So now all we need to do is drag whatever graphic we want to use into the green input on lockdown. So for this example, I'm going to grab this bruise asset that I have and I'm going to plug that directly into lockdown. So in this case, you can see that nothing's happened. So if we view our uh, graphic on its own, we can see that the size is not, it's not the same size as our source footage. So what we need to do is load in a resize node, which will scale the graphic to the size of um, our lockdown comp, and then you'll be able to see it. Now, obviously, that's still not correct. So I'm going to add another node. I'm going to add a transform node with XF. And then I can use the controls here to move it around. So let's scale it down. And we're just going to move it into place. Until we get something we're happy with. So now under the merge node, we can change the blending mode to something like soft light. And that will blend that graphic in. And it's as simple as that. So now let's play back what we've got. I'll just let that cache to RAM. So now that's cached, we can see the full result of our playback. Now, obviously, the color doesn't quite match uh, my skin tones, but you could easily correct that with the color corrector node. One thing just to note is um, lockdown can be a little bit heavy on your comp. So it may be a good idea in some cases to come to the, once you're happy with what you've got in your lockdown here, you can right click and just set up cache to disk. Um, click OK, let the whole thing uh, render to your RAM, play it through, and then come back and just lock the cache because that means next time you reopen Resolve, instead of having to calculate the entire lockdown each time, it's just going to have to load a series of um, EXR files, which will render a lot quicker for you. So I hope you found that useful. I have to say that learning to use lockdown was extremely quick and easy, and it takes a small amount of effort to get great looking results. The beauty of it is, if you want to replace those cuts and bruises with something else, it's as simple as dragging the different assets onto your composition and replacing what's being plugged into the lockdown nodes. Bear in mind, lockdown is still in beta and releases officially in August 2021, so we can expect to see even more improvements as time goes on. I for one will definitely be getting this to add as an essential tool to my VFX workflow. As usual, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video for more content and I'll see you next time.